and welcome this month's RC Racing. And it's a special special because we're revisiting the greatest race of last year, the 1-8th Buggy World Championships. Yes, the event seen by many as the pinnacle of the RC calendar came to a pulse racing climax at the RC Powerboat Facility in Pattaya, Thailand. Hundreds of drivers, many manufacturers and no shortage of talent gunning to take the RC throne. And as always, we were there to see it all. I've found a couple of people who might know something about the race because, well, they did quite well. It's uh, Cody King and, of course, at Sushihara. Cody, let's talk to you first. Going into the race, qualified second, how confident were you? Um, you know, I was just kind of going in trying to shoot for maybe a top five or, you know, try and put on a good show and have a good battle, and I guess we did that. At Sushi, you, were, you came in on pole. You practiced there so long. You must have had an awful lot of confidence going into that final. Yeah, um... um I definitely have uh, so much um, uh, concentration for winning for this time because I have kind of my hometown because I live in Thailand now. So, uh, but um, it's just just great race. Well, it certainly was a great race, and John Hindhoff joins me now to talk us through the opening laps. And we're off and running in the World Championship final at Sushihara from pole position around the banking for the first time. The usual scramble into the infield hairpin, but it's relatively clean, and Hara has got away. That's a very good start from the pole man, and the main thing is, was he gets a very big tank slapper there, and he's come under pressure straight away, and in fact loses the lead straight away. Just as I was about to say, he'd managed to avoid all the potential first lap problems, and there he gets mired in trouble and drops down to fourth position, Nick Damon. Cracking start there, but he has kind of uh, thrown it away with just a bit of over exuberance. Cody King is now leading from Ryan Mayfield. I think Jeremy Court sneaked through from further down the grid. Yeah, and that all started off with a little bit too much power going over the infield whoops. Big tank slapper, lost momentum going over the big jumps, and from there on, at Sushihara, our pull man was going backwards. Cody King is settled well. He's got Ryan Mayfield. Mayfield didn't, wasn't able to go full speed in the semis because he had a front suspension problem. That's now fixed. But the favourite is still the guy in third, Jared Tebow, the man who set all the pace all for the weekend apart from the semi final team, which was just slower, but he still won it. So perhaps he was uh, holding himself back, John. Battle for the lead then. Cody King. There he goes. Ryan Mayfield, the two Americans, setting the pace with the young Jared uh, Tebow. He has been very impressive, Tebow, in third place. And again, a little mistake there has looked like the right front just caught one of the craters that are forming and there's the biggest problem and that is a massive, massive problem. Look at the distance that that has cost the chasing pack. You didn't make a very good start. You fell back. Was, were you concerned at that point? Uh, yes, I have a little bit nervous to the first uh, five minutes, I think, and I have a couple of some uh, small mistake. And I have, uh, I think, 10 seconds behind from uh, the, the leader but I just come back to my uh, the normal concentration. Now, Cody, you were up and up in the mix the whole time. I mean, what were your tactics in those, for those first 20 minutes? I mean, we saw, obviously, we saw Mayfield, we saw t we saw you swapping the whole time. Were you just trying to pace them or were you trying to keep out of trouble? Um, I think a little bit of both, more of pacing. You know, I've kind of learned over the many years I've been racing that I'm super good at pacing people and I'm super good at running their pace, even if before I wasn't running that pace. Um, so it's a little bit of both, you know, you kind of wanted to stay cautious and stay easy at the beginning and not not get back. You know, Hara had that little trouble at the beginning and got back from us. And um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to pace them, see where I put myself after the first few minutes. And we kind of all had a really great battle, all four of us. That's a top three, what, by a second? If that, if that, maybe 15, 20, very short RC buggy lengths. And there's the... Challenge again for the lead. These big jumps on the far side of the circuit from us are actually a, a pretty good overtaking manoeuvre. The technical whoops, if you like, in the middle and these hairpins, and you'll notice there that these infield hairpins have very odd cambers on them and you've got to be very patient in trying to get the power down. Yes, it's four-wheel drive, but get the power on a little bit too early and you're just going to wash the front of the buggy out and you will lose time. Well, we just see three of the best drivers do, I would say, a lap at exactly the same time. Yeah. They, they, it is quite remarkable. So, and oh, oh, the lead is gone! That was a, that was a, a prime example. He knew he's been coming. He put an extra throttle. He tried to steal a couple of extra yards, and you can't so, do it here. Yeah. It's, a, it's a circuit where you've got to respect it every lap. He's actually been quite lucky there, Nick, because, yes, he's lost the lead, but that's all he's lost. You know, he's maybe lost half a second or a second, but he's still sitting there, as you can see, in second place at the moment, and that 
kind of impact, I know these machines are pretty robust, but that kind of impact with the scenery, particularly with the barriers on the outside, you drag a wheel on that, oh, and there's the leader gone again. Well, there you go, you see, in the space of a lap and a half, he's got the lead back, but he was looking not to do damage. That's top four now in the same frame, which is fantastic. Now, remember, though, they're not necessarily on the same pit stops as we're getting the shadows just lengthening a bit now, Nick. And again, worth pointing out that that means the track surface, the temperature of the dirt and the concrete infill that is in there, it's going to change. We're going to get different conditions again. And once again, for the next maybe 10 or 15 minutes, it's going to be a bit of a voyage of discovery. Absolutely. I mean, whilst we are in Thailand, which is famed being really hot, this week, up until today, has been mainly cloudy and not massively hot. But today, seven degrees more than it's been before, and we've got sun. So they've got completely different conditions on the track, which, as you say, John, he has patches in shade, in sun, and concrete, with different levels of grip for both the concrete surface and the actual uh, tyres. Going past the pit complex on that long right-hander and into this uh, sweeping, banked, uh, right-hander you can see from the start of the race the guys are having to feather the throttle now they're not able to go full throttle past the pitch which they were easily doing before they're beginning to lose rear end grip i think that, that all the tires are now uh, half the race old they are worn down to lesser extents they're going to have the cars drifting and more likely they're going to start getting understeer over obviously depending on which end has gone um, first away and they're having you say be very careful we see a three second drop in the semi i could do a five second lap drop in this final yeah, between the, what Nick's talking about there is between the pace at the beginning and the end as the tyres quite naturally take uh, the, just getting the grip and the power of the three horsepower motors through the four-wheel drive, it's going to take its toll and again, look, you can see these leading drivers beginning to slide the car it's, it's absolutely noticeable there mm -hmm. well, that was flat shot, Harry Flat has threw that right-hander early on and now it's a big lift yeah, and they're also taking a bit more care for around that top corner that's, that's got dug out the King's now got ahead of Mayfield so King, I think, is now leading this race yep. from Mayfield yep. um, that may it's very hard because these cars are landing so hard they're bottoming out so for a while you get a bad landing you've actually got no steering John yeah and and the, you, the, there's nothing to do really mm. other than get off any everything and try and let the buggy settle itself down this is the battle for the lead believe it or not is we're halfway through this final and there's still you know Mrs H wouldn't let me put the house on any of the top four at the moment because there's just no way to call it I have to say in a car-to-car -car battle, Mayfield looks the best. He yeah. seems the guy who can get past. I'm not sure whether he's got it when he's in the front, but he, he, he's the only person who's making clean attack. He's, he's very decisive when he goes for a pass. Look, again, sliding, backing the buggy in there under the brakes as the marshal's putting uh, one of the uh, car, the, the buggies on from further down the field. But you can see that Mayfield, when he does have to make a pass, he's very decisive and very clean, Nick, it has to be said as well. Although he's under pressure now and he's having to defend through that infield hairpin. That's a very nasty camber there, very easy to lose. The back end into it and the front end out of it. King is he's pushing him really hard. King seems to be happier following the leading, John. He's, he's mm. got that ability you know, where he gets he, he, he gets sucked up by the person who's coming in front of you and gain quickly. He's pushing hard now. He, he wants the lead, even with half the race to go. Yeah, and you saw there, just got on the power a little bit early, the front end of his Kyosho just washing out a little bit, had to put extra lock on, and again, that's going to put strain on the tyres, and that is, I know that sounds ridiculous that we talked about this in an RC race, but this is an hour long, and like any form of racing equipment, these machines, oh, as the leader goes over! That, that was that was pushing not unlucky. I think he's he's yeah. and again, and oh, again he's, 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 come on, oh. concentrate. Rhythm, concentrate. rhythm, rhythm. And there's Horace straight back up again. He said the, the guys in third and fourth are just just out of shot. They are. Mm. It's not a, a two horse race. It's a four horse race, and you make one mistake and you can drop three places. This is a phenomenal contest. And as I was saying about the tyres, you know these are racing machines. They're built to do what they need to do and no more. There's very little in that. So the tyres. I mean, you don't want a tyre that's going to hamper you. You want it to give its best performance for as long as it can. But then, if it basically falls apart as you cross the chequered flag in the old Colin Chapman style, then that's fine. Uh, if it does five more laps, Colin Chapman would have told you it was over-engineered. So this is the battle now for second position, Nick. Yeah, in Hara, again, he keep getting close, but I, I think is playing a more tactical role. He's not looking to fight. He's happy to live in a bit of space. And there he goes over. Hara's over there. Possibly, maybe he's uh, still suffering from that stop go he got oddly. He wants to be careful he doesn't touch anyone, but there we go around again. And look, Cody King made a slight mistake, and now we've got first and second back with each other. And that's Tebow, who's now got behind King. So you see, 
you, you miss a couple of seconds and someone comes straight through and then Tebow's rolled. Kyosha again, who've got an unbelievable record in... Uh, and Mayfield's flamed, Mayfield's flamed. The leader has gone out. Oh my goodness me, and in a race that is so tight, this could be curtains for Ryan Mayfield on the AE with a really engine. Look at how much time is just going down the plug hole at the moment. He gets the... And he's still not there. Oh, this is disastrous. That was a slow restart and he's lost that. I'm afraid Ryan, who I think has been the most impressive driver in the final so far, that, um, John, that's it. Unless the other three also flame as well, which I can't see happening, he's out. But so it's King now from Tebow with Haro in third but it's now a three horse race. After about 25 minutes, we lost Ryan and, uh, with, a, with a cut, and then I think about 15 minutes later, we lost uh, Yari also with a cut. How did you, are you aware that's happened as soon as it's happened? And, and how does that affect the way you approach the rest of the race? Um, I didn't know it happened until I heard Scotty announce it over the PA. Um, but I didn't want to get too excited. You never want to get yourself too amped up about out there thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to win. and. So I kind of just went about it. You know, I knew Haro wasn't, he wasn't going to give up, obviously. Of course he didn't give up. And don't you go anywhere either. We'll explore the rest of the final after this break. We'll be right back to A final action in just a moment. But first, how do you improve on a car that's already won the world championship? We chatted to HB designer Josh Alton to find out. Try to work on making the platform uh, user-friendly, um, easy maintenance, and basically we came up with the D8. It's very easy to work on. It's very um, like it, it's it's got adjustments, but if you make an adjustment and it's wrong, it doesn't wreck the car. We have quite a bit of confidence in knowing what we can change. It's very consistent. It's just how much you want out of it, how much steering. If you want a little push, you can, you can put into it whatever you want, very very easily. The U.S. has these supercross style tracks, you know, with the big jumps and corners, and you know, it's a jump corner, jump corner setup, and and you have to, you know, a lot of timings involved. Um, the, the racing drivetrains actually take more of a of a beating. You know, you listen to these guys; they really don't let off when they land <laughs> off of jumps. You know, um, going through bumps or through a whoop section, they're on the throttle. They're not really off the throttle. D8 is really, really tough. Like other cars are breaking, where ours isn't. Um, our, I think our plastic is really, really good. If I can't break it, it's usually pretty good, <laughs> bottom line. Basically, the Hara uh, edition is um, all of our little hop-ups throughout the last two years. Um, we took those, we pretty much put, them in, put it all in the kit. That's pretty much what all the racers wanted. Um, definitely more grip, more stable, more steering, uh, easier as the jumps. Uh, the new parts combination with a new setup, also like def, def oil setup, shock setup. Have kind of big different compared to two years ago. We tried initially to come up with a, um, a kit that would be uh, consumer friendly, meaning it's not too expensive, but yet you can still win with it. Um, and then as we came up with hop ups to lighten the car or to, um, you know, maybe a little bit different geometry, um, we realized, hey, this is really good. Like this, this track have uh, a lot of long time to keep in the air. So also uh, easier to control. And making full use of that control, now we rejoin Hara as he continues his battle in the closing third of the Rallycross Worlds. Towards those last 15, 20 minutes, you really came back. I mean, had, had you, was that just because you were concentrating better or was the car improving as time went on? I think it's just my uh, driving more, more better at the, the end. And um, uh, also, um, the, I have uh, more fuel mileage than the other, anybody, anybody else. So I have uh, one bit less top. So I, uh, a little bit keep calm, calm down because I have the the other advantage, other advantage for the my race. So um, yeah, it's really really good uh, co uh, concentration for the last 50 minutes. Now what? Nearly 55 minutes of the hour gone, and Cody King is under a bit of pressure this now. This is all about be. this is all about pressure, John. It, either of these drivers on their own could drive laps fast enough to get to the end and win. Hara is going to try and hunt him down and try and force some mistakes. It's been a battle of the top four for most of this race with Jared Tebow and Ryan Mayfield at various times leading the race but falling by the wayside through the middle portions of the race and it's left us now. Well, I was going to say 
down to just Cody King to stroke this home, but that is far from how it is with Atsushi Hara, our pole qualifier, the hot shoe on the hot body with the OS engine, the Japanese driver, local to this circuit, knows it like the back of his hands. I think I think King's tightening up. He lost about a second and a half, two seconds in that lap. I think. Is that Hara behind him? Hara behind him. Hara's Hara behind him. Really quickly. I think Hara's got the bit between him. King has suddenly realised I can be world champion. Hara's been world champion, and that counts for a lot when it comes to pressure. Is King going to choke on this one? He's now... Oh, well, look at Hara. He's eating huge lumps out of the leader. And it's not just seconds per lap. It's almost seconds per corner now. And Atsushi Hara has target acquired, and he's hunting down Cody King in the lead. This is quite the most exciting running trial race I've ever seen. It's amazing. It's been 57 minutes in. There's only three or four minutes to go. Hara can take a back-to-back -back world championship. Well, King has become an unlikely, but very popular world champion, but he's tightening up, John. He's definitely tightening up. But little mistakes, Hara, speed everywhere. Now, he's got a problem now, King, because it's clearly, to me, he doesn't know what to do, whether to push and risk all or to be conservative. And the problem is he's backing off. He's backing into trouble. And look at Hara now. We've seen him getting the power on earlier and earlier. And look at the way the car's squirreling around. And he's using all the skill that he's got left. He's half the lead in one lap. Driving masterclass from Hara. He's He's basically gone, I know it's risky to push in this circuit, but I can either come second and not push, or I can win the World Championship again, and he is going for it. King, what can he do? Can, is he going to go consistent? He's going to make, he's just so, he's Look tightening at, up. You can see though, Nick, he's taking the corners like 50 pence pieces, not in nice, long, smooth swoops now. He's putting a lot of steering input in, little movements all the time. That's going to be hurting those front tyres. It's going to be hurting the amount of gravity. He's made a mistake. The lead is gone, and Hara goes through. Cody King is broken. He's choked under the pressure, and Hara's gone through. At least, and Hara now goes, oh, he's gone over. Hara's gone over, and he's given the lead back the King but now can King keep his head together what a moment that was as Suchi Hara took the lead and he's still there Nick this is not over we've got two, two or three laps to go and Hara amazing let's look at this again through John yeah the leader just clips the inside of the infield hairpin Hara goes through that's a clean move you can see him there straight away on the power the front wheel scrabbling for grip now what happened on these infield whoops oh he singled it he singled it when he should have been doubling it and that put the buggy out of out of sequence and then in trying to block the inside I think he just hooked up a little bit too early now this is back to live and this is first and second for the world championship and King has got Hara right with him in his wheel tracks there's nothing between them as they go on to complete another lap around past the very big and appreciative crowd here now with about four minutes to go you finally caught up with Cody um, you you're in the lead we think for about 25 meters. I mean, what, what were you thinking as you went past him? Yes, um, actually I have maybe too much exciting and then I have no idea how long to, to the, how, how, how many minutes I have to the, for the finish. So I just, every rap I just keep constantly just follow Cody or pass, if I have a chance I get, try to pass him. Even like last lap, um, I still, I, I don't know uh, if it's last lap or not. So it's, I think it's just too much, uh, just, I think I have uh, too much exciting. Actually interesting, uh, when we were commenting the race we didn't know it was last lap either and it was, but I mean, he was hunting you down. Were, were you tightening up as he was chasing you down, did you feel? Um, not really. You know, he's one of the best overall drivers in the world, I would think. And I just went out there, kind of just kept my head in the game, didn't want to, you know, get myself too excited. But how did you feel when he went past you on that corner and suddenly he was in the lead? We, 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 we thought, right, are we happy to be chasing at that point? Um, yes and no. I kind of wanted to keep the lead, but at the same time, you know, he he did all that work to get back up there and I made the mistake and he got past me and I just like he was saying you don't want to get too excited and I you know I didn't get myself too excited and he had that little bobble over that little double and it's just the way things played out all the drivers have stayed on who've been driving this week and there's a fantastic atmosphere here in horror hits the same point on the track that cost Cody King the lead just a couple of laps ago. Has Cody King now got enough of this traffic ahead of them as well? There's traffic ahead of them in the check. Oh my goodness me! Hara's binned it! I think that's it. I think. Oh, oh no! Again! Again! Think... Any chance has gone now. Cody King. Lap and a half to go. I can't believe this, John. That's unbelievable. Cody King must have it now. Hara has played the big stakes game. He's put it all in. He's gone all in. And I'm afraid he's managed to throw it all away and Cody King comes around on what now is a demonstration last lap of the world finals here 
in Pattaya in Thailand. What a culmination to a phenomenal week of racing. And Cody King, second best qualifier, will be, I've got to say, it, Nick, he'll be a popular victor, but he would have been a big outside bet at the start of this week. An unlikely summer. Oh. Unlikely world champion of the He's gone over. The leader's gone over, but he's very lucky there. He recovers in time to come through. Well, what a couple of years it's been for this young man. He's been pretty impressive on the North American national scene and worked his way through. It wasn't exactly Cody Who when he came in, and there's another mistake. I think he's got enough to hold on to it now. I'm looking back, and Hara has eased off. As I say, it wasn't exactly Cody Who, but there was a lot of people who didn't know this very much about this young man as he comes through for victory, and we have a new world champion in the offing, Cody King. From the USA on the Kyosho He's Orion. Just tagged the extra lap there, John. He probably didn't want to do that. I think, I think both him and, and Hara made the look. Well, I thought that was over. The no, time's, they've, the just, time's they've up. just clipped through without. Oh, my leave. goodness. He's got one lap to He's going to clean this. He lost a bit of that, that penultimate lap. Now, there's that Hara that's behind Hara, him. That's Hara behind him. There's still a chance. If he makes the eight, he clean, he's fine. He made two mistakes last lap. Well, this is drama right to the very end. The time expired, and I was giving him the race there, but he went across the line before the hour clicked over and that's just extra power uh, extra pressure and look at Hara Hara is giving it everything but there's not enough time in the giant flag and now we can say Cody King is world champion hats off to the young American the victor the spoils what a marvelous performance there ah oh, well that's the that's the face of a gallant runner-up of superb performance from Hara but just too short I really, really proud with uh, my second place because um, it's most of uh, at the past uh, the former the world champions um, after get the world champion the next place next world is not really good so I still have you know I have a comp uh, competitive competitive with uh, all the top guys so I really have with I'm I'm sure I want to win but it's it's I have a really good really really good uh, the second place so I'm still happy with this. Last time we talked to you, Cody was just after you won. It hadn't really sunk in. I've, I've got two questions for you. One, what's it like being a world champion? And two, did you get a new phone? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great. You know, I, mean, I've, I think I've earned a lot of respect from some people, and uh, um, it's awesome. You know, I just just really stoked with me and my dad. He's he's done so much for me in my racing career and helped me so so much. And I honestly don't think I could have done it without him. And uh, Adrian Brew team from Team Orion and. Everybody from Team Kyosho and AK and Byron's and everybody just helping me so much and it's awesome. I'm super stoked to get a get a world championship for all those guys. And the phone? <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, I was actually fortunate enough to get one for free from AT&T, so it's, <laughs> that was good. You see, it's Perks being world champion even in radio control car racing. Guys, thank you very much for talking to us. We hope you've enjoyed this uh, recap of the, the best race of last year and look forward to many great races coming up in the new series of RC Racing, which starts next month here at the NEO 11.